What is up, people? We are back at it again, breaking down another live stream. This time, again, going through that unscripted dial video that I was doing before. So let's get into it. But quickly, if you are not subscribed to this channel, don't be one of those 79.1% of people who aren't subscribed. Click that button. This month's live stream was something. I sat through the first half of this live stream thinking, okay, this is, this is all right. It's kind of, you know, back to the less exciting stuff. And, you know, Intrepid deserves a break. We're getting the Ranger next month, along with fighting some new enemies that we will talk about in a little bit. But, you know, it was all right. And then we get about halfway through and bam, we get hit with all of these changes that are fantastic changes for Ashes of Creation that Steven talked about. We'll get into those in a second, but we're gonna start this out with the studio update. Intrepid hit Milestone 2. They wouldn't tell us what Milestone 2 was, but they hit a new milestone. So, you know, that's great. It means we're getting closer to Alpha 2. How many milestones are left between here and Alpha 2? I don't know, probably a thousand. Who really knows? We've also learned that they've hired 40 people this year, which isn't surprising when you see how much dedication they're putting to hiring they did a hiring fair they post every week the new jobs that they have posted so you know that's a good thing more people means more development and the more we get on to this team the better also steven's hiring an assistant so you know if you are qualified for that you can go apply from here we move into the environment update where we see some riverlands and desert foliage it doesn't really show us much just a bit of like the cactuses and the trees and the grass that we'll see in those biomes within this though that we did learn that in alpha 2 we will have the forest riverland desert and a little bit of the badlands biomes among others so that's something new we haven't had any confirmation really besides the riverland and the desert before and i can't wait to see the forests but does this mean that like we're not going to see the tropics this time around? Are they going to keep the tropics out of that? Because that was like the majority of the Alpha 1 biome was the tropics. So it'd be kind of interesting if they remove that from Alpha 2. Other than the foliage, we go into character art and we get the Jade Sigil cosmetic, which is a kind of cool looking belt. We have the Trawler's Guys. We get a couple of the mounts, one called the Garden, which this guy's pretty badass looking. I believe he was a cosmetic skin as well. But he's like this giant tree looking guy in the leaves and stuff on the mount will turn or wave in the wind and all of that uh we get the sun plume duck which is another cosmetic mount and then we get some minotaur concept art these guys right here these are i love how these guys look on concept i can't wait to see how they look in the game which we will actually see because these are the creatures that steven will be fighting as the ranger class in next week's live stream he did talk about that little leak going towards what we're going to see with that ranger so it'll be pretty interesting to see these guys lore wise apparently hate dwarves you can see in some of the concept that they have dwarf bones and dwarf skeletons on their armor and it's a little sad but you know they again they're minotaurs so they kind of i'm going to see a lot of oh they're just a tauren from wow well you know the torrents were based off minotaurs and minotaurs are a mythical creature so i don't want to hear it if intrepid ever needs a 10th race down the road in an expansion i feel like these guys would be pretty badass too um steven said they have a few classes with them there's like a tanky class which you can see with the shield there is this minotaur riding a boar which he said at some points in combat he'll get on or off the mount to fight you which will be a pretty interesting fight i don't know if we're going to see all all of these against a ranger or just a couple but you know they're the pretty cool looking and then we have this unfinished snake model guy that's supposed to be in a dungeon the cyclops world boss which this guy is going to be in the riverlands and he's going to roam around the riverlands you can see the scale compared to the player so he'll be pretty massive i kind of see him as the fell reaver of the riverlands for those of you who played burning crusade and you had the fell reaver walking around steven said you're going to hear his footsteps in the distance and see him towering through the trees it'll be pretty cool we then get our favorite potato pet the rootling his in-game model finally i bought this guy i'm not gonna lie i would buy a, a plushie of this guy i'd buy a real potato of this guy probably because he's kind of cute um and then we get into the empyrean model we see the female empyrean elf model that we're gonna see in the game i i don't know what i feel about this so again there is gonna be loads of customization behind this but to me this model doesn't like this is the first time i've looked at something that intrepid has done and be like okay that doesn't really look quite like 
the concept art. And I think part of it is the skin. Her skin is not as smooth and like shiny, I guess, as the concept was. And the hair, I mean, again, customization. It's hard to say how I feel about this until we can see the extensive customization behind these races. But from this single shot, I don't like this elf. I hope that they improve. I can't wait to see more of them. It's just, I don't know. It just doesn't seem what I expected based off the concept art. Uh, we also get some Veiloon changes. We haven't seen the Veiloon humans in a long time. We know they're desert dwellers, and this is the first time we've seen some concept art since they've been doing some of the race changes, and they look great. I love them. Steven said they also, I'm probably going to get this wrong. I don't have it written down here, but he said they have some effect, like when they come back through the gateway, something happens with their skin, so I don't know if there's going to be like visual effects on these guys that make them look more like mystical. I, I don't really know. Uh, we'll have to wait and see in-game for those guys. But we also had some Nikua concept art changes, which the Nikua we saw before, they look like the Alpha One Dwarfs, but you know, bald. Now, they feel like they're straight out of Moana. Honestly, I love the look of these guys. They're more tropical. Originally, lore-wise, it said that the Nikua weren't going to have really much hair, but they're definitely with the beards and the hair. I think these guys look great. I love the way they're taking these dwarves, and I can't wait to see them more in the game. I'm assuming based off how they look, I bet they're going to be a bit more bulky than what we saw before as well. Again, we can only see the head, but just looking at, like, the neck, shoulders, they look more bulky than these skinny Nikua that we've gotten in the past. But then again, a beetle animation, then a Tolnar foot. The first Tolnar model foot, there's no color to this. It's like black and white. They clearly haven't added any textures or anything like this yet. And you know, it's just a fun little leak. Getting closer and closer to seeing that in-game Tolnar model. We saw their concept art last month and now we got the foot, which, you know, strives off of last month when they were joking about just showing us a toe. So we got the Tolnar toe. And then we have the big stuff in the design update. I already did a big video on the map changes right now, but we saw the new map. This map is almost three times bigger. They went from 480 square kilometers to 1200 square kilometers, 750 square kilometers of this being water. So more than half of the map is water. So you can tell that naval content is going great from what they planned on. Just based off the changes they're making, I think there's gonna be a much heavier focus on naval content than originally planned. They are doing a lot around it. They're moving the world around, they're making islands, they're reestablishing harbors and trade routes and things like that to really enhance the naval content experience. And I can't wait to see how naval content works. I feel like we're still months out from seeing this. We also learned that all open sea is gonna be open flag combat. There is is going to be no corruption system involved when you're out on the ocean. You're automatically going to be PvP flagged, which, you know, is great. I've seen a lot of comments on this. There's a lot of discussion. I'm going to do a bigger video on this down the road. I think this will work well because it's on the ocean. It's not a beginner level thing. So you're not gonna get ganked in the starting zone because of this change. Getting into naval content is gonna be something that as you progress as a player, you're gonna get a boat eventually and you're gonna set out on the sea and do the stuff. You're not gonna be early game out on the ocean. So it's really, it's gonna be a really cool thing to see, I think. And I think this is gonna be a great change. It really changes up the game as a whole though, because you know, there was no, PvP specific zones before other than when you're doing certain PvP objectives. Um, with the map, we also got zone names. We saw some new islands. There's a new volcanic region. Again, all of this I did in a map breakdown video, which you can find on the channel. Steven then talks about node changes. We went from 103 nodes to 85 nodes. There's less nodes now. It makes some nodes that are there feel more meaningful, and there are still five metropolis nodes that you can unlock. We did learn a bit more about vassal nodes. We got a new image really describing the vassal nodes, so you you see the six that's the metropolis and then the fives are cities and then so on and so forth going on the node levels based off this each metropolis can have two level five city vassals and that city vassal can then have a level four and a level three vassal for each of them and that level four can have a level three vassal and then the level three vassals can have x which is a level zero to two node which i mean level zero to two you don't really get anything special from their nodes they're just starting out level three is when you really get citizenship and mayoral stuff and all of that but it's kind of cool to see so basically each metropolis can have 
12 vassals behind it. As of right now, the population is still 8 to 10,000 players per server with these changes, but that still could go up down the road. I mean, it really depends on testing and server stability and all of that. We also learned about some new node features we haven't really heard about. The first being policies. Policies are like little customization things for nodes that mayors can pick and then the citizens of the node can vote on, which change up how the node plays out a little bit, further customizing it and making it stand out from the rest. These policies can give you various perks to the node or to the citizens of the node that can really benefit the players. And the stream showed a few examples of these as well, which you can see. And behind this policy thing, there is a happiness feature. Happiness allows certain policies to happen based on the happiness level. Poor happiness could turn off certain NPCs and really disable the node, which could even evolve to a policy invoking martial law or something along that, which in a sense could be good for a siege, Steven said, because it brings out a more military presence on the node, but it probably would lock out a majority of the NPCs. These policies can do various things like the martial law thing based around culture, building type, social organizations, and religion, and really impact the players and further customize the node, as I said. And lastly, we learn about some big caravan changes that Intrepid is working on as well. We learned that caravans now need to be constructed through multiple components. You can gather up these components, you can go to the, the caravan city or whatever Steven was referring it to, and you can give these components to the NPC there and he will create a caravan if you don't have all the components you'll get default components which will have like lesser stats so you can still probably make a caravan with no components it's just going to be a real sucky caravan once you turn in all the components you will have various compartments to the caravans that you can assign to different parties so like if your friend wanted to transport his goods you could like, give him one compartment and you could give your guild another compartment and then you can assign insurance for these compartments so if people put their resources in and then the caravan fails well they get money out of it. Once prepped, you will launch your caravan and you can pick in a sense where it spawns outside the node. So basically players or enemies won't be able to predict where you're spawning this caravan. It's going to be somewhere outside the node and it gives you a slight advantage to get that caravan going without being ganked. When you spawn the caravan, you also are able to teleport yourself and your party to the caravan, which is a really cool feature. I like this because then people aren't just going to follow you outside as soon as you get out of the safe zone and start attacking your caravan. It's going to be more of a, okay, I got to figure out where and I got to plan this. And with the map changes and all that, it's going to, it's really going to take some organization to hunt down and take out a caravan unless it's pure luck. Also, as your caravan's traveling, as you approach cities, there is going to be a safety spawn, which once you get over that line, you're gonna your caravan's gonna auto move into the city and there's gonna be NPC guards that pop up around it and it's gonna be safe. People won't be able to destroy it once it gets past that line. And you can use these nodes in these towns as pit stops. So if you're under attack, you can direct your caravan to one of these cities and hopefully make it to that safety line before you get destroyed, which is a really neat feature it allows for more control as a caravan driver so you're not just like out in the wild hoping somebody's going to come help you if you're under attack and then once you're at the pit stop you can either end the caravan or you can continue it to the next city but that is about it this live stream wasn't as great as you know combat or character creator but it's still a pretty good live stream and the world map changes really made the live stream i think let me know what you guys think of the live stream what was your favorite part and what do you think of the imperian elves i want to know your opinions on the imperian elves because it could just be me. Maybe I just don't like them and everybody else loves them. I don't really know. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums or buy some cosmetic packs or just be ready to jump into the world of Era. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.